Uptake and intercellular accumulation of melting microbeads in human CD3 T cells. Materials and methods. Milton human CD3 microbeads were labeled with anti-mouse IgG Alexa 555, while human peripheral blood mononuclear cells were labeled with lipid vibrant multicolor cell labeling kit. This kit stains the lipid membrane blue. Cells were seeded onto glass cover slips and melting microbeads were let to sediment onto the cells. Live imaging of cells was performed using the Andar Revolution spinning disk and rendered using the Imeris software suite. Here we see peripheral blood mononuclear cells prior to exposure to Milton human CD3 microbeads. However, once the Milton microbeads are added, binding and uptake of the microbeads in pink can be tracked using confocal microscopy. The cells and Milton microbeads can be easier visualized using isosurface imaging. Let's focus on a single cell. The top left is the confocal image, while the top right is a mix of confocal image of the beads and isosurface view of the cell membrane. The bottom left is the isosurface view, and the bottom right is the isosurface view tracking vesicle movements. Now we will zoom in on a cell to see the beads being internalized and vesicle movements. Here is a closer zoom that shows internalization of the Milton microbeads along with vesicle movement and fusion. The same experiment was repeated using a Dynabead FlowComp CD3 kit. Compared to the Milton microbeads, Dynabeads were not internalized within the cells, probably due to the larger bead size. The zoom image shows the Dynabeads labeled in red. For better resolution and to ensure the visualization of the melting microbeads was not due to artifacts, transmission electron microscopy (TEM) imaging is used. T cells are isolated with melting e human CD3 microbeads following the manufacturer's protocol, prepared using conventional epon embedding and ultrathin sectioning, then visualized using a Philips CM100. In this image, we see the melting e microbeads on the plasma membrane. Here, the melting microbeads are being internalized via a clathrin coated pit. And here, the melting microbeads are accumulating in endocytic compartments. Here, the arrows demonstrate movement of vesicles containing the melting microbeads. Using isosurface imaging, we see the vesicles containing the melting microbeads are co-localizing with acidic compartments. Acidic vesicles are labeled with lysotracker green, and yellow color indicates co-localization with the melting microbeads. Using confocal microscopy, we can see on this zoomed-in image that the labeled melting microbeads are still present within the cell after 24 hours. And here, we switch over to isosurface imaging. Compared to melting microbeads, dynabeads are not found within the T-cells after 24 hours, primarily due to the dynabead release mechanism. Finally, we verify the melting microbeads are still present and are not degraded in the cells after 24 hours using TEM. T cells are again isolated with the melting human CD3 microbeads, prepared using conventional epon embedding and ultrathrin sectioning, then visualized using a Philips CM100. Here we see that the melting microbeads are still within the T cells after 24 hours.